We have spent uh, quite a bit of time understanding negative feedback loops and how to stabilize them. Not for any particular circuits at the transistor level, but we considered circuits at the control source level. And of course, we will implement the control sources using transistors later. Essentially, we learned how to make an op-amp. If you do realize an op-amp or some other multi-stage amplifier, we have an idea of how to uh, make the system stable when the multi-stage amplifier is placed in a feedback loop. Okay. Essentially, the idea is to make one of the poles at much lower frequency than the others, so that the magnitude roll off is dominated by that pole up to the unity gain frequency and a little bit, little bit beyond that. And that is known as dominant pole compensation. While it is not the only way to stabilize negative feedback systems, it is a frequently used one and that is what we will use for op amps. Okay. So, now we will uh, switch gears a little bit. Uh, all we did with the MOS transistor so far was to make the common source amplifier, which is the MOS transistor by itself, a voltage controlled current source loaded by a resistor. Okay. And we also considered a number of ways of biasing the MOS transistor. Now, uh, if you remember the general linear circuits from uh, electrical and magnetic circuits, we had the basic elements R, L and C and also all types of control sources. right? either you could have either a control voltage source or a control current source and the controlling quantity itself could be either a voltage or a current. So, there are four types of uh, control sources. So, what we will do now is to realize these things using the active element that we know which is the MOS transistor. Okay. Again, there are a number of options. So, right now what I will restrict myself to is to realize each of these sources using a single transistor. Okay. So, a single transistor works as the control source. We may use other transistors for biasing and so on as we need. Okay. The common source amplifier is like this. If I omit the output conductance of the MOS transistor, we have the load resistance and we have the source voltage here. The output is minus GMVGS times, let me call this VI, VI. Okay. Of course, the output voltage is proportional to the input voltage. But this does not make it a voltage control voltage source. Why is that? What is the meaning of a voltage control voltage source? We denote it with the symbol. If this is V x, this will be some k times V x. So, output voltage is proportional to the input voltage. But that is true of any linear circuit, right? If you have a linear circuit and stick a, some voltage somewhere, you will get an output voltage which is proportional to it. So, what is special about a voltage control voltage source? What is that? Yeah. So, it should be independent of uh, the load. That is, you can connect anything you want here and the voltage should still remain k times V x. And also, let us say you have some two nodes at which you want to sense the voltage, you connect the control source to it, it should not change the voltage. That is this uh, control source should not offer any loading to the lo loading to whatever it is connected to. Okay. So, the idea is between some nodes in the circuit, you would have had a voltage V x and you have to sense it. How do you sense it? When you sense it, you should not draw any current. If you do, that voltage can change. Okay. So, that should not happen. So, it should be independent of the impedance of the driving source as well as the load impedance. Okay. And that is uh, described by what are the what are the properties of the control source that quantify this behavior? Hmm. In general, any control source can be represented like that. Okay. 
obviously it's just the thevenin equivalent looking in here you will have some resistance that's true of any linear circuit and looking back this way you will have a voltage source and a resistance okay and these are the input resistance and the output resistance respectively of the source okay now the whole idea is in a voltage control voltage source so let's say we connect some imperfect driving source to it and also we load it what will be the voltage across the load in this case yeah so it will be the input voltage times the division factor due to this resistive divider which is ri by rs plus ri and that times k is what appears between these two terminals right and what appears across the load is again uh, you get that by multiplying it by the division factor of this resistive divider you will have rl by ro plus rl right this is correct now i want this to be equal to kvi so what does it mean yeah so ideally ri the input resistance should be infinite for a voltage controlled voltage source okay if r i equals infinity this ratio becomes 1 and if r o equals 0 that ratio becomes 1 okay so r o must be the output resistance must be very small and the input resistance must be very large i mean in uh, if it's an ideal case the input resistance must be infinite and the output resistance must be 0 okay but in a real case you want the input resistance to be much larger than the thevenin resistance of the source that you are connecting to it much larger than r s and similarly the output resistance r o must be much smaller than whatever load you are connecting it to okay so if that's the case it will behave like a voltage control voltage source meaning the voltage across the load will be some constant factor k times the input voltage and it does not depend on the impedance of either the driving source or the impedance of the load okay so that is what a control source is in addition to being getting proportionality which anyway any linear circuit will give you okay if you apply any input to a linear circuit every voltage and current will be proportional to that okay so the proportionality stuff is not the important thing in a voltage controlled uh, voltage source the output voltage should be the input voltage times some constant and that constant should not should not be dependent on either the uh, resistance of the driving source or the resistance of the load okay so now you can imagine that for all types of uh, all four types of control sources there is some constraint on the input and output resistances okay so i already told you that for a voltage control voltage source the input resistance must be infinite so that's because you can imagine that i mean if these two are the input terminals of the control source you connect it anywhere then no current flows clearly it's not going to affect what voltage was there in the first place the output resistance must be zero so that you can draw any current from it and the output voltage is not changed okay what is the what are the corresponding quantities for a voltage control current source Srinath, arise infinity yeah whenever you have a voltage control clearly you want an infinite input resistance because if you want to sense a voltage you should do it in a way without drawing any current because if you draw a current you could change that voltage okay so basically you shouldn't load whatever you are sensing right if you if you want to sense something and many times you want to measure something accurately but if the act of the measurement changes what was there then it's a useless measurement okay so if you have a voltage control the input resistance must be infinite and similarly it has to be a current source so what is the output resistance obviously infinite and in practice you have to interpret this infinity and zero as much larger than or much smaller than what else is being connected in series with it right and for a current control current source zero and infinity you can think of a i think of an ideal current control source as this okay 
So, the input terminals 1 1 prime simply have a short circuit between them. Now, what does it mean? So, let us say you have some circuit and there is some current flowing here I x and you want to sense it. What will you do? You will break this wire and connect it up that way. Okay. Now, if you did introduce some resistance in this path, obviously it will change some uh, voltages and currents in the circuit. In general, it would do that. Okay, so you should have zero input resistance for a current controlled source. Okay, and this is very similar to what is the internal resistance of an ammeter? Zero. You are basically sensing the current. It should be zero. Similarly, the internal resistance of a voltmeter, yeah, ideally it should be infinity. Okay, it's exactly the same. Voltage controlled stuff should have infinite input resistance and current control sources should have 0 input resistance and a current control voltage source what is the output resistance 0 and that is I mean the output resistance is basically the same as for a voltage source or a current source. Okay, The fact that it is dependent does not matter is this okay. So, when we say we want to realize control sources this is what we want to make. Okay, So, clearly in a voltage control voltage source we want the output voltage to be proportional to the input voltage independently of everything under the sun right the source the load and the transistor exact parameters of the transistor and so on. Okay. The gain of the common source amplifier is minus g m r l. So, it depends on the transistor it depends on the load. Okay. Here we do not want that is this fine any questions. Okay, then let us get started with a voltage control voltage source and in general a voltage control voltage source has a gain that is uh, has a gain k that is the output voltage is k times the input voltage. Now, because of uh, some constraints that I will get into later we will restrict ourselves to k equals 1 for now. Okay, So, we will just try to make V naught equals V i. Okay. Now, what is the use of something like that if the output voltage is equal to the input voltage? What is that? Yeah. So, even though the output voltage is the same as the input voltage, if you had a source like this, on the load, if you connect it directly, you will have voltage division. Okay. So, instead of that, if you do connect it with a uh, voltage control voltage also gain still 1 this voltage will be the same as the input voltage okay so it's used quite often like that uh, just for buffering so even even though the gain is only 1 it is still a useful uh, animal okay now we have to build this using the mos transistor Okay. Yeah, yeah, everything is yeah. Maybe I should have mentioned that. Everything I am talking about now will be for the incremental values because we are talking about basically realizing linear transfer functions, and that's valid only for incremental quantities. Now, how large the increment can be depends entirely on the biasing conditions and so on. Okay, 10 millivolt could be large, and 1 volt could be small in some other circuit. Okay. But yeah, everything we are talking about is for small signal increments. Now, we have a MOS transistor to do this and what is the model of the MOS transistor the most basic model? Huh? It is a voltage control current source right I mean I again I am talking about the incremental model it is a inherently a voltage control current source. So, whatever source we have to make we still have to inside it have a voltage control current source. Okay. Is this fine? I mean that is the element that we have we do not have yet another voltage control voltage source with which to build this. Okay. So, now how do we go about uh, doing this and we want to do this accurately like I said we do not want it to depend on the source or load or the transistor parameters and the only way to do it accurately is using negative feedback. Okay. So, you actually measure the output voltage compare it to the input and drive the output in the correct direction. Okay. Is this fine? I 
and in our case essentially the error voltage we can take that as either v not v i minus v not or v not minus v i ok. Negative feedback works by comparing or deriving an error by comparing the actual output to the desired output and adjusting the output in a way to reduce the magnitude of the error ok. So, here we define the error it could be I mean the error is simply either v i minus v not or v not minus v i because the equation we want to realize the relationship we want to realize is v not equals v i ok. So, the error is v not minus v i or v i minus v not either one going to 0 will give you this relationship ok. Is this fine? So, that means that we have to control the output voltage or drive the output voltage in such a way that V i minus V naught goes to 0 ok. This is the negative feedback action that we want what we I mean in negative feedback there is always something that you sense and something that you drive ok. What you sense is the error which is dependent on the context in this particular case it is either V i minus V naught or V naught minus V i and what you drive is the output and in this case it is the output voltage ok. Now, given that you have a MOS transistor to play with what is it that a MOS transistor senses again we are only thinking about the incremental model of the MOS transistor what is it that it senses? It senses a voltage difference VGS it senses the difference between the gate and source voltages ok and what does it drive? It drives a current it can I mean you can take it out the drain or the source ok. So, basically it drives a current. Now, in this particular case we want to control the output voltage. So, how do we do that? We have a device that drives only a current how do we drive the output voltage with that? Huh? Resistor why? Now, the question is our basic device it is a response to the gate source voltage and what it gives out is a current ok. And in this particular system we want to change the output voltage you define some node as the output and we want to be able to either increase or decrease that voltage. How do I do that with a current source? Can I change the voltage at some node using a current source? How do I do that? I mean, we have done this before what is that? Why capacitor? No, no that is not the idea. Okay, let us try this. So, we have some uh, circuit and there is a particular node here ok and this is connected to ground. Now, I am allowed to only connect current sources to this ok. Let us say this circuit has whatever it has inside, but and this voltage has some uh, this voltage has some value V x. I want to increase the voltage at this node and I can only connect current sources to this. How do I do that? No, I have told you I can only connect current sources. Only current source. <laughs> Why? What should I do? I mean, imagine that this. Okay, this restriction is not necessary. But let's say this has only resistors, and inside it may have resistors, voltage sources, current sources, whatever. Okay. Now, I have some extra current source here. You connect this current source any which way you want into this circuit. So, that the voltage at node n 1 will increase what should I do? Exactly right. If I do that and if this i naught is positive will the voltage there increase or decrease? What will happen or will not change? All of you say increase without the in or the d so that I do not know what you are saying. <laughs> huh? Does it increase?
what happens yeah i mean that symbol means an ideal current source right i mean if you cannot i mean it could be that the answer is indeterminate if that's the case let me know huh if what is passive so if it has sources inside it's clearly not passive right it could have independent sources inside will it increase or decrease or i mean it could go either way i don't know just because he said it doesn't mean it's the right answer <laughs> huh? no it is i said it can have uh, other sources and resistors okay yeah really i don't know is that true yeah i have like 10 volts here and uh, 20 volts here it's flowing from lower to higher why is this so difficult if i draw out these two terminals a a prime what's the equivalent looking into it whatever is the circuit inside what is it huh vth rdh and what will be the voltage here if you don't connect anything vth and if i do connect a current source like that what will be the voltage plus i not rdh so is it increased or decreased it has increased so it is perfectly correct solution so you just push current into a node and it will make that voltage node voltage increase right isn't it i mean you don't need a resistor you are thinking of ohms law and then if current flows through a resistor you get a voltage and if there is no resistor the resistance is infinity so it will increase by infinity which is what we want right so basically all i am trying to say is just because you want a control voltage source doesn't mean that you have to look for some device which also has internally a voltage source okay with a controlled current source you can make a very good make a controlled voltage source also okay but if you have it turns out using negative feedback you can have control source of any kind as long as its proportionality constant is very high you can make any other kind of control source using that okay and almost ideal and if this proportionality constant is infinity the resulting control source will also be ideal okay so essentially this was just to say that we have uh, inherent device we have that we can't change right that's a matter of technology we can draw all the symbols that we want for all kinds of control sources but we have a mos transistor and it's uh closest thing to a voltage controlled current source it's definitely very far from a voltage controlled voltage source but we are now trying to make a volt controlled voltage source which means we have to be able to manipulate the output voltage what i'm trying to show you is it's perfectly possible to manipulate the voltage of some node using a current source all you have to do is push current into that node that's all okay so the circuit finally will be so simple it's almost a letdown but uh, <laughs> we want to make v not equals vi that means it's a voltage control voltage source with gain of 1 okay and the toy that we have to make this is a mos transistor gate drain and source if this is vgs this will be gm times vgs okay so now we have already said everything that we want to say we want to control the output voltage based on vi minus v not or v not minus vi okay so what should be the gate source voltage of the transistor it should be either vi minus v not or v not minus vi because that's what we are sensing and that's what we want to sense and this is what the mos transistor senses okay so this should somehow get there and what should happen if uh, vi is more than v not what should happen to the output voltage must increase obviously and really we don't have a way of directly increasing the output voltage 
So, current must be what? We must push in, push it into the output node. Okay. Whatever the output node is, you define some node as the output node, and the current must be pushed into that node if V i is more than V naught. This is correct. So, if we do that, I mean, obviously, just like any other, I mean, we have done this for negative feedback biasing. So, if we go on doing this, right, we go on pushing the current as long as V i is more than V naught, finally, it will reach steady state only when V i equals V naught, right. That is exactly what we want to have. Is this okay? Yeah. No, no, we have not assumed anything so far. So, we will see how it behaves. Okay. Yeah, we will see what to do. The circuit has? Yeah, so that is a problem. So, that means that you have an infinite resistance. So, even then, I mean, you probably, if you have only current sources, what will be the voltage at those nodes? You cannot define it, right? So, it will be infinite probably and you can make it a bigger infinity by pushing it. <laughs> Let us not worry about the degenerate cases. Yeah, see this, all this is verbal description to for us to get at the circuit. Once we have the circuit, we have to analyze and see how it behaves and we wanted a certain set of conditions, right? We wanted the input resistance to be large, output resistance to be small and so on. All of that comes out of analysis. After that, like I said, we wanted some value for GM. So, we have to uh, analyze it and see what GM must be or whatever uh, you have a number of circuit components, whatever their values must be so that we get nearly the condition that we want, okay? So, that we will do later. First, we have to synthesize the circuit, then we anal analyze. Analysis is a requirement, so which means you have to be fluent with analysis. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Fine. Why? This is incremental VGS, right? This is all, everything here is with the incremental picture. Incremental VG, VGS can be anything, okay? So there is no nonlinearity here, right? Negative VGS we have seen, right? That negative incremental VGS only means that you reduce the value of VGS from the operating point. Here it looks like current goes out of the drain. What it really means is in the total picture, the current going into the drain falls down. Effectively, the incremental current goes out of the drain, okay? So, everything here is with the incremental uh, quantities, but it is kind of painful to say incremental VGS and incremental ID all the time. So, I will say VGS and ID, but the moment I put this picture here, right, with the control source, it means that everything, I mean, it only refers to the small signal incremental values, okay? Anything else? So, now we have some description. So, what should the circuit look like? Uh, VGS should be either V i minus V naught or V naught minus V i and the output uh, node you have to choose it such that current gets pushed into the output node if V i is more than V naught. So, which one should be the output node? Uh, source drain, I mean, cannot be the gate, there are only two choices here. So. Source, why? It looks like, I mean, in fact, if you even stare at this for a moment, you will realize that the correct thing to do is you have V i here and V naught here. Obviously, if V i is more than V naught, current gets pushed into that node, okay? That is exactly what you wanted and we are not using the drain. So, that will get, the, you have to have some path for current. So, we will connect it to incremental ground. Is this okay? So, we wanted the gate source voltage to be either V i minus V naught or V naught minus V i and if V i is more than V naught, current should get pushed into the output node. Now, you can try it out. I mean, if you are not convinced of this, you can try all the possibilities. There are not that many in this case. We have a single transistor. You will see that the possibility that works is to apply the input voltage V i to the gate and think of the source node as the output node. And you can immediately see that in this case, if V i is more than V naught, current flows from drain to source. That is, it gets pushed into the output node. The output voltage tends to rise, okay? So, again, you can imagine a small capacitor from the source to ground. If you are uncomfortable with that open circuit, then you can see that current gets pushed in and it will rise and it will stop rising only when V naught exactly equals V i. 
Is this okay? And you can also see that that condition does not depend on uh, uh, the GM of the transistor, right? As of now. Now, we have not connected a load and source to it that we have to do. Is this okay or no? Now, the input always comes from some circuit whose equivalent is an input voltage source in series with the source resistance and that gets connected to the gate of the transistor. The drain of the transistor is useless for us now. So, we just connect it to the small signal incremental ground and the source is where we get the output. Okay. Now, presumably you take the output to connect it to something and that something is represented by a load resistance R L, right. So, we had some idea how to get the circuit and we got it that was you have to apply the input to the gate and take the output from the source and ground the drain. So, that why did we do the why did we come up with that configuration? We had this idea of negative feedback, the V i is more than V naught current should get pushed into the output node and so on that is how we got it. Now, we do the analysis I connected the input source and I have the load. So, please find V naught by V i for this circuit. Okay. What is V naught by V i that we want? What is it that we wanted? 1. Okay. Find out what it is exactly. quite easy to derive. So, this voltage is V i of course, because with respect to ground, because no current is flowing there. V g s is V i minus V naught. So, g m times V i minus V naught is the current flowing this way and that flows through R l. So, the drop here is that and that is nothing but V naught itself. Okay. So, if you work it out, you will get V naught by V i to be g m R l by 1 plus g m R l. Okay. Now, the one common mistake that happens many times is the source is not at ground here. So, do not assume that V g s is 0 merely because a V g s is the same as the input. right? So, I saw some people doing that and it is quite common to make that mistake or sometimes when uh, when you examine the case with V i being 0, you will have you will assume that V g s is 0 that may not be the case. Okay. You have control sources in the circuit. So, otherwise yeah this is quite easy to derive and you get this. And this form also should be quite familiar. What is it? Loop gain by 1 plus loop gain that you get right, what you normally get with uh, negative feedback systems. In particular, in the denominator, you get something that is like 1 plus loop gain. Okay. Now, we wanted this to be 1, it is of course not 1, it is never 1, it is always less than that. So, for it to be close enough to 1, you have to have g m much more than. 1 by R L. Okay. So, this is what he was uh, referring to. Uh, if you have G m equal to infinity, then you will have V naught by V a to be exactly 1. Otherwise, you will uh, have something less than that, but this is not something peculiar to this. right? Even our op amp circuits, what was the gain of the op amp? If the op amp's gain was finite, we always had k times 1 by 1 plus k by A naught. Right? The value of the gain that we want, which is k times 1 divided by 1 plus reciprocal of the loop gain. So, here also I can rewrite this as 1 times 1 plus 1 by g m r l. This is what we want and this is what we get in presence of finite loop gain. If g m r l was infinity, we would have got 1. Okay. Is this fine? So, it does behave yeah, provided g m is much more than r l, this expression becomes more or less independent of g m and independent of r l, right? which is what we want in a controlled source. Is this okay? Now, again, it is just like the op amp. Once the op amp's gain is very high, the exact value of the gain becomes irrelevant. Okay? Here also it is the same, you want a large g m, but once it is large, its exact value does not change, does not affect results much. Whether g m r l is 100 or uh, 200, 
this uh, number will still be very close to 1. If it is 100, it is 0.99. If it is 200, it may be 0.995. It changes by very little. Okay. And that property is because of negative feedback. Once you have a large loop gain, the transfer functions will become insensitive to the exact value of the loop gain. Okay. So, that is why we use negative feedback in the first place. What is the value of V i minus V o? That is V g s in this case. V i minus V naught, what is that? I want, what is the gate source voltage in this circuit? I express everything in terms of V i, right? That is the applied voltage. V i divided by 1 plus G m r l, right? That is all. So, this voltage here, V g s. Okay. And is it large or small voltage? What do you expect? Small, very small. You want GM, you design the circuit with GMRL being very large, then this becomes a very small voltage. And what happens if uh, GM is infinite? This goes to 0. So, essentially the gate and source become virtually shorted. Again, just like the input terminals of, the op of an op amp. This is always the case in a negative feedback circuit, right? The negative feedback uh, system you sense the difference between some things and if the loop gain is infinity, the difference between those two goes to 0. Okay, That is the idea. So, here also the gate it normally uh, use the term virtual short when you talk about an op amp, but it is true here also. If GM is very large, then the gate and source are nearly virtually shorted. Okay. Any questions? The usefulness of this virtual short is that if you do recognize that there is negative feedback and if you expect that it is going to be strong negative feedback, then while doing the analysis, you can virtually short some nodes and do the analysis. It becomes very easy. If you had realized that there is neg negative feedback, then you could have immediately realized that these two should be the same voltage. So, output should be the same as the input. Okay. Of course, initially you do the full analysis and see what should be virtually shorted to what, but after a while you get used to the idea. Okay. What else did we want from our uh, voltage control voltage source? Of course, we wanted V naught equals V i, but what were the other properties I just listed? Huh? Yeah, our, the input and output resistances should have some values. Now, the input resistance of course, is measured between the terminals to which you connect the input source. So, what is the input resistance looking that way? What is it? This Kavya Kanta, what is that? Why? No current is going there, that is right. And you connect the output, uh, you connect the load between these two terminals. What is the resistance looking between those? Of course, you exclude the load while doing that. Okay. What is that resistance? You please evaluate. In fact, we have evaluated this for some other reason earlier, but what is that? 1 by GM. Why? Majority voting. Is it 1 by GM? Why is it 1 by GM? What? We evaluated this particular circuit. Why? When we, what about, when we, had a particular type of biasing where the source was not at ground, we wanted to make it ground by connecting a capacitor and we had to choose the value of the capacitor such that its reactance is much smaller than the resistance between these two terminals. Okay, And that came out to be 1 by gm, but anyway, this is not hard to evaluate. First of all, when you do this, you set the input source to 0. Okay. 
and you apply a test voltage. The gate is at 0 volts because no current flows through RS and this is shorted. The source is at V test. Okay, so, VGS equals minus V test. So, the current flowing here is minus G m V test or basically the current flowing this way is G m times V test. So, voltage by current is 1 by G m. Okay, I do not think I need to explain this further. If you have difficulties, you let me know. So, the resistance looking into the source of the transistor is 1 by G m. Okay? And so, the output resistance of this uh, voltage controlled voltage source is 1 by G m. Again, we want it to be small and small compared to what? The load resistance R i is infinity anyway for the inherent source follower and R o is 1 by G m and this will be less than R l if G m R l is more than 1. Basically, if you have designed the source follower properly, you would have sorry, if you have designed this particular circuit which is called the source follower, I will explain later the properly, you would have chosen G m R l to be much more than 1. Okay, that will automatically mean that the output resistance is much smaller than the load resistance. Is this okay? Possibly, because uh, the gate is grounded. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. This is fine. So that is essentially we. Uh, had some idea of what we want to do a voltage control voltage source with gain 1 and we derive the incremental picture of it okay, using a MOS transistor and <coughs> if you calculate the incremental gain and the incremental input and output resistances they are close to what we want. The input resistance is of course infinite, but the output resistance is much smaller than R L and the gain of the voltage control voltage source is close to 1 and also importantly these things. Uh, I mean the gain is independent of the load resistance and GM of the transistor and the source resistance. Okay, once you satisfy this condition. Okay, so that's why this circuit is used as a buffer and it's quite useful. Okay. Now our job is not done because all we have done is to derive the incremental picture. We have to first bias the transistor so that we get that incremental picture in the first place, right? We have to use a transistor in saturation region so that all these things will happen, isn't it? So we have, to, we have like four different ways of biasing a transistor. If you get rid of that crappy fixed voltage bias, there are uh, other four ways of biasing the transistor at a given current. So we can use one of them, and uh, then so that will give you the biasing picture. And just like we did for the common source amplifier, we have to combine this signal picture with that biasing picture to give you the complete circuit. Okay. Now, before that let me ask you quickly what happens. Uh, now, this is not the as you know this is not the complete model of the MOS transistor. What is missing here? Hmm? What is missing? Yeah, what is missing? Nothing? GDS, the not the I mean even before going into the capacitors, we had the output conductance GDS between the drain and source, even in saturation region, right? So only in the zeroth order model that that is uh, that conductance is zero, it is there. So now how will it change things? You also have to include that in your analysis, and we have the expression for the input resistance and the output resistance and the gain. So how will it change those things? Yeah, well, you first notice that you can do the analysis anyway if you are confused, right? But you notice that the load was connected here between the source and ground, and the drain is at small signal ground. So, this GDS is also connected between this and small signal ground. So, in the expression for the gain, you have to change this to RL parallel RDS, that is all. So, that appears as an extra load. The output resistance of the transistor is also loading the circuit by itself. Okay. Is this part fine? And what happens to the input resistance? It will be the same because the input current is 0, that is why it is infinite. And the output resistance? 
what happens to the output resistance because of this DDS? So again, if you connect the test source here, because of exactly the same reasoning as before, the current here will be GM V test. The current here will be GDS V test. So the total current is GM plus GDS times V test. So the output resistance instead of being 1 by GM, it changes to 1 by GM plus GDS. A very minor change. Either way, both for gain and the uh, output resistance. The GDS makes some difference, but it is not a qualitative difference. It makes a small difference to the values. Okay. So, if you are given some uh, non-zero value of lambda, you have to include this also in the small signal analysis. This is okay. Biasing, we had uh, four different ways of uh, doing it, sensing at the drain and feeding back to the gate. I will show the simplest form. You could have some other circuitry in between or the second one where you sense at the source and feed back to the source or you sensor the drain, feed back to the source and finally, you have censored the source and feed back to the gate, but this also includes feed back to the source. Okay. So, these were the pictures just for the sake of biasing. Now, in principle, we can take any of these and combine it with that signal picture because using big inductors and capacitors, we can open circuit any wire that is there and we can create short circuit between two nodes that are not connected. Okay, But of course, we also want to design nice circuits. So, which of these circuits, which of these biasing arrangements would be most convenient for us for this particular circuit? Which ones? First one, yeah, with reason. Why, why second Ram Subramanian? Huh? Why? Ah, well, I do not know that, but <laughs> yeah. first of all, the third and fourth seem more complicated in the first place. So, if at all possible for simpler circuits, we would use the first two, right? I mean, it is not that we should avoid them, but uh, obviously, they need extra components, right? We have some inverting gains and so on. And among the first two, which is convenient and why? Second one, why? Yeah. Why? Why is the second one most convenient? Or is it? It's Mahesh. Or is it? Viji also. Ah, that is true, right? I mean, they don't worry about this value of uh, VGO, right? I mean, yeah. Okay, we have to open it somehow, right? Which we have done before, by the way. It is true, actually, the second one is the most convenient, and the most important reason is that the source is not connected to ground, right? Here we have to lift it off the ground. That is actually a more difficult thing, usually. If you, if something, if two things are connected, to open it is more difficult because you need a very large inductor, or I do not know what else, you have to come up with some other wild scheme, okay? Whereas, here the source is not connected to ground. If you recall the common source amplifier using this circuit, we actually added a capacitor to make it grounded. Now, it is not connected to ground. So, that is the most important reason. Okay. So, the second circuit is the most convenient. So, think about how to combine this with this signal picture and everything else that you need, you already know. Okay. How to establish the value of VG naught, how to combine the signal with the bias, all these things we have done long back for common source amplifier. So, you should be able to come up with the circuit for this uh, voltage control voltage source using the MOS transistor including biasing if the biasing picture looks like this. Okay. In fact, it looks like uh, it should look like one of your old common source amplifier circuits with uh, some of the components omitted. Okay. 
Yeah, you will still have to use capacitors. 